Good morning. Listen, honey, I just jumped on really quick to encourage you. Sugar, boom, boom, boom. Check this out. Now, I was just in the restroom and I was just thinking about how when I was walking down the hall and um, this, this older lady stopped me, she was like, you are so beautiful, so beautiful. And when I got in the bathroom, my spirit started to reflect back on my journey to actually believing that this was actually a fact. And I want to tell you today that sometimes people see things in you that you're not able to see in yourself. Does that make sense to you on today? Can I get an amen or a hallelujah? Sometimes people are able to see things in you that you're not able to see in yourself. Beauty has never been something that I've seen in myself. Never. Because I've always considered myself as overweight. I was ugly because of the incident that I had when I got hit by the car and left that ugly scar in my face um, to couple with the fact that I got confirmation from a um, loved one at a family's cookout that you was one of the most ugliest things God created. So when I started thinking about it, I was like, well, God, how do you deal with when people are able to see you one way, but your spirit and your mind and your heart and your soul isn't able to see what of the sea. And the spirit of the Lord began to speak to me and said, you got to go uproot the seed, the seed, the negative seed, the negative word, the negative deed, the negative action that was taken upon you to plant the seed so that you can see what everyone else sees. Okay. Does that make sense? Now, like I told you on this journey, um, me getting a divorce, um, my ex-husband filing for a divorce was one of the best things literally that could have happened to me because through that process of me reaping the seeds that I've sown with breaking up that marriage, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the um, what you call it? Adultery, you know, reaping it. I don't know if you've heard my testimony, but honey, I ain't never in my whole life seen somebody like in the book uh, uh, over there about like David talking about David and how when he um, had Uriah's um, killed because he had an affair with Bathsheba and boom, within months, um, Jonathan, I mean, Nathan came to him and gave him the parable. And then within um, uh, weeks or days, the prophecy of the baby, um, being born and uh, dying came to pass. And what I liked when I started studying about the son or the baby or the gender of the baby or how old was the baby, the baby didn't live long enough for him to him or her to have a name or to or it to be recorded in history. But I'm saying all that to say is he reaped what he sold quickly. And I feel like I'm David, baby sister, son, baby, because when I tell you uh, I got a Holy Ghost slam and got drug for that one, baby, I know not even go go that way <clears throat> again. So don't nobody got to worry about me messing with your husband or calling your husband. Or, I don't bother people's husbands, okay? After the Lord dragged me the way he drew me. Now, go back to it. <clears throat> the seed. The seed. You got to deal with the seed. So I wrote down, how do you uproot a seed? Now, I don't have really deep roots in the garden that I planted on the front porch. I got a, a flower garden on the front, front porch and I got three or four different types of plants planted in that flower bed. One plant is kind of like, you don't have to put water on these little purple things. I don't know the name of them, but you plant them and they just, they just grow without you even attending to them. Then I tried to plant a hibiscus flower in there. Apparently that's not the right soil. That's not the right environment. So they don't grow. Then I put two other types of flowers that's supposed to die, but they're supposed to come back year round in there. So I really was trying to plant something that I didn't have to do a lot of work with. Now, what I learned is when I was getting ready to reuse that pot, I had some ferns that I had purchased um, from Alabama somewhere and they were beautiful at the beginning, but they died. 
okay? So when I was getting ready to take that dirt out of that pot, the roots, even though the top part of that, um, those ferns was dead, the roots, the roots of that fern was living and active. At the bottom, when I pulled it, pulled, pulled it up, there were roots green with green spurts on them. I've never seen green spurts. They never came to the top. But at the bottom, it was growing. It was growing. It didn't make any sense. But this is how the enemy uses negative words to continue to grow in adults. Somebody even said something to you as a little kid. Your parents may have not done their best to raise you or you you something happened to you and it was a seed planted now on the outside you look normal you don't even look like nothing wrong with you because looking at me y'all wouldn't have thought nothing was wrong with me but inside their houses inside of the shell is was a very insecure low self-esteemed person because of a seed because of a deed you see what i'm saying so the Lord said, you got to get to the root of it. Now, like I told you, this process allowed me to evaluate myself, my life, my, my upbringing, um, things that occurred. Why, why am, am I the way that I am? And I went on a journey, a journey of knowing who I am, um, calling down um, generational things, um, dealing with things that I, that I caused to myself, like being accountable, showing up, all these things I had to deal with, okay? Now, in Matthew 15 and 3, it said, Every plant which the Heavenly Father had not planted shall be uprooted. This means seeds planted by man and not God. Life patterns can be seeds. I went on a quest. I'm saying I'll let to tell you. I went on a quest to uproot every negative Seed in every negative deed. What does that look like? Praying. Therapy. Isolation. Cutting off some things. Um, dealing with some things. Not able to deal with some things. Things that you can't deal with that's too big for you right now. You put it in the box. But every little thing that you're able to deal with. Every little thing that you're able to um to open up and dissect, you need to do it. You need to get on a um, on get in a hurry to find out more things about you. Not your sister, not your brother, not your mom and them. It's, you know what I'm saying? We need to focus on on this this specimen of a person because I I need to get myself together. But I can't because of all the seeds, all the deeds, and the things that have been deeply rooted. Deliverance several times um, um prayer much fasting um, I'm, I'm learning y'all i've been saved for 20 something years and i'm gonna just be real with you fasting that just ain't my thing now i speak in tongues and do everything because fasting kills the flesh and it's hard for me baby i was 325 pounds 315 soaking wet baby so you know it's hard for for, the, for to put this flesh on 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 how but I'm learning how to fast. And fasting is breaking away and chiseling um, my flesh. So even now, as I'm continuously going on my journey of uprooting things, it's helping me to uproot things. It's helping me to be accountable. When I go back and write down the things, the seeds, um, the deeds, I'm writing them down and I'm going back looking at them. Okay, this happened, this happened, I did this. And I never, ever, ever tried to make myself the victim in anything that is done. And when I see God kill something in me, I do like David. Once it's dead, I get up, I wash my face, I stop mourning, I take off my sackcloth, and I, I, I go eat and I go praise, I praise the Lord because it's dead. There's no need in me trying to resuscitate things that God is killing and dropping off of me. I don't understand it to the fullest, but God, if you deem it necessary for me to let this go, even when I don't have the strength to let it go, and I see, because this is what God will do sometimes, when you don't have the strength to let something go, he'll create a situation where people, jobs, situation, ministries, um, things that you don't have the strength to let go, because he loves you so much, he'll gracefully 
take those things away you away from you so that he can help you to maneuver through the path. Because the path of you getting yourself together is not just for you to get yourself together. I always told you this. Yourself to get your 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 path to get yourself together is so that you can help your sister girl, your sister friend, your sister man, your brother man get themselves together. You can um lay a foundation like Jesus did. You can you can you can read all the things that he did and you can pattern, okay, this is this is this is what righteousness looks like. This is what freedom looks like. That's your ultimate goal of uprooting seeds and deeds and, and life patterns. It's not just for you. It's for you to help other people uproot life cycles, patterns, so that we can bring people into the kingdom. But you can't draw nobody when you're not able to deal with you. So God has been dealing with me. I've been dealing with myself. I've been... Um, you know, if you can't afford a therapist, I look at self-help videos on YouTube. Um, I have a mentor. I have a counsel. I have a wife coach. I have a life coach. I have all these people. You may be thinking that is that's not necessary. Whatever you got to do to get free, I tell people this all the time. My journey is not going to look like your journey, and I'm not apologizing for any anything that God is doing in my life. So if it doesn't look right to you, if it looks like it's too much to you, then I'm sorry, it's not you, it's me. That's how you have to be. This is what I got to do to get free. And I'm unapologetically um, healing and, and, and letting things uproot and pulling things up out of me so that I can be a better me, better wife, better mother, better minister, better, better friend, better everything. You just got to do what you got to do. So... Again, every plant which my heavenly father had not planted, Matthew 15 and 3, shall be uprooted. It has to be uprooted. Deliverance has to come. You got to be delivered. If you don't know how to be delivered, you need to seek someone to walk you through deliverance. Some stuff come through, um, just come through prayer and fasting. Some stuff we can, we can, you know what I was telling you, that's easy for us to deal with. We can deal with it. But some stuff is just not that easy for you to deal with. So the things that's not easy for you to deal with, you need to reach out for help to deal with those things. So I hope I didn't say too much on today. But you guys stay encouraged and remember, you have to uproot the seed. Find out why am I the way that I am? What happened to me? What did I allow? What did? How did the enemy sneak in? I noticed that as a little girl, the enemy was targeting me and my esteem as a little girl because he knew that I would grow up to be a giant, a warrior in the spirit. So he always, always aimed at my um, esteem, my depression, uh, my out, outer being because the more you focus on the outer, you can't focus on the inner. And that was his job to keep me all focused. She fat, she ugly. You stupid. You, you ain't a good this. You ain't a good that. You can't do that right. Those type of things. When all actuality, from what other people were, were saying, you're beautiful. You're not beautiful, child, please. You, you see what I'm saying? It started early on as a little child enemy start chiseling trying to get me to go through a path of, well, I'm going to sleep with all these men to feel fulfilled. I'm going to be addicted to porn to be fulfilled. I'm going to masturbate to be fulfilled. I'm going to do all these things to be fulfilled. And even when I give my life to the, to the Lord, I'm still not going to be fulfilled. I'm going to have an affair. I'm going to have an affair after affair to be fulfilled. When all I really needed to do was sit down and deal with the root cause of the problem. It was an evil seed planted. I was one of the enemy's number one targets out of all my siblings. Nobody had to go to the hospital as much as me. Nobody had to go to doctor's appointments as much as me. Nobody had as many accidents as me. Like, make it make sense, Jesus. Make it make sense. Why all this stuff happened to me? Because from my mother's womb, from your mother's womb, God had a plan and a purpose for your life. And the enemy tried to come in early so that our whole life we're dealing with this. No, no, no. It ends today. You will be an overcomer. You will uproot this. 
in the name of Jesus. Bye.